forgive the background noise and the jiggling of the camera. I am currently driving, trying to get some uh, chores done and run some errands. Uh, we've been getting pretty, pretty far behind on a lot of stuff lately because I've been taking advantage of this gorgeous weather we've been having this summer. But I just wanted to give y'all an update of what's coming down the turnpike. And uh, one of my big projects is going to be a project um, pretty much goes back to the beginning when uh, my wife and I had first decided to start doing travel and backpacking and, you know, off-grid stuff and put it on a channel of some sort. And we're going to explain in that little video um it's going to be a pretty big video because it's going to span over the period of the next few weeks uh, we're going to explain though why we are no longer doing that and why we opted to go down a different route so essentially what had happened a few years back i inherited a farm from my grandparents and Everything was going smoothly at first. Uh, we got along with the neighbors. I mean, I lived out there on and off for 40 years, so I like to think I knew my neighbors, but apparently I didn't. So the time came, we were doing a whole off-grid scenario. We built a cabin from reclaimed materials, we started growing crops, uh, becoming self-sufficient, and it was all going okay until I started my transition. And it was after I had started my transition that my neighbor's true colors started to show through, and it became evident real quickly we were not welcome out there. Um, stuff like calling the planning department on us every single time we did any little thing. Uh, at first, the planning department had kind of turned a blind eye on it, but eventually they started getting tired of the phone calls from the neighbors and stuff like that, who, mind you, do their own little thing on their property and no one bats an eye. But eventually the so many calls had came through that the planning department finally had to do an investigation and they found some stuff that essentially just to appease our neighbors um you know appease the masses versus the one they pretty much told us we had to condemn our cabin and stop living the off-grid life um Unfortunately for us, we live in the most restricted county in Indiana when it comes to off-grid living. Um, outside our county, every other county in the state is very, very open to off-grid living. Um, Indiana is actually one of the best places uh, in the United States to live off-grid and, you know, start your own organic, self-sufficient lifestyle but not here in this county because we have a big college town and the town has an, an has an appearance to maintain so you know for all the rich people who send their kids here uh, anyway regardless of all that um, we also had a shop that my wife ran and it was um, not not up everyone's alley, but it was something she was very passionate about. It was a pagan and witchcraft shop, and the neighbors did not like that as well. So eventually, that got shut down as well. So we were we were in this depressive state where we essentially lost our home, and. We did not know what to do so instead of moping around uh, we went and got a hotel room for a little while and stayed in there and then we opted to turn our flatbed farm truck into a tiny home 
which that was good I mean it was very very small which is something we want to do eventually is minimize our uh, worldly goods and move into a tiny home or a, a, a more a van or a schoolie we plan on doing a build like that later on down the road and it was good it was a good practice run but uh, we have uh, three children one of them of which is still currently uh, a minor so we need to hang around for a few more years until he's 18. After that our plans are to go off and see the world outside of our home state of Indiana. But anyway back to the story I know I'm rambling we ended up leaving the farm all together and getting a place to live in the city and at the time it seemed like the best move for us um, I love being in the city that we're in but ultimately I, I just I just need the open road I need to get out I need to do my own thing and now that we are no longer on this self-sufficient lifestyle, we were living in the city, we're back to paying bills and rent, and we're pretty much back under the man's thumb. You know, years past, we have been self-sufficient. We have found ways of getting by without having to pay an arm and a leg just to survive. But... We're actually going back out to the farm. Um, I have not been out there for about a year. Uh, and, I mean, I've been out there once or twice just to check on things, make sure nobody broke into the tiny home or stole anything. But um, it's, it's kind of bittersweet, but it's my property. I want to go back to it. I want to clean it up get it back to square one and we want to do something like we did before but not on a permanent basis like we did with the cabin the cabin you know if, if we if we do something like uh, our, our van or our schoolie or something um, that's great nobody can stop us from going out there and putting gardens in and stuff so we would like to get back into the whole self-sufficient thing just on a smaller scale and nothing permanently affixed to the property if that makes sense um we we've got bad blood now with the uh, planning department in the county and our neighbors so we want something to where we can just go back and enjoy the property and just pick up roots and leave if we have to so that's uh, that's what this uh, upcoming video is going to be all about is essentially me going back out to the property um, giving everyone a tour cleaning things up and getting it staged and ready for the next phase of our self-sufficient lifestyle out there um, we're not gonna be full-time self-sufficient we are still gonna be living in town but pretty good a pretty good bet we're gonna be spending a lot of time out there plus I have a couple of areas where um, I do camping and stuff like that and yeah away from the uh, cabin and the buildings and the gardens and stuff because the property is about 50 50 farmland woods so I have got an area there where I would like to get cleaned up and ready for doing some videos later on maybe some bushcraft uh, some how-to uh, some camping videos stuff like that I mean it would be a good place for me to go and do that without having to drive all over God's green country to find a suitable place plus it's semi-private I don't have to worry about anyone coming up on me and interrupting a film um, like I would out here Right now, I'm currently driving through um, Oregon Monroe State Forest in Bloomington, Indiana, or 
just north of Bloomington, Indiana. But uh, I'm just driving through right now, not doing anything here today. Um, but yeah, that's essentially where we're going with the farm. So we're going to bring y'all back to the farm. Uh, I'm going to bring y'all back to the farm. And I'm going to give you the tour, show you around, you know, get that video up and going this week, next week. Worked a little bit on it the other day. Uh, but I also have another video coming up. It's going to be on Indiana's first state park, um, McCormick's Creek State Park, which is located only about 10 miles from our farm. So uh, that's going to be another uh, longer video, longer than what I have been posting the past week. And uh, I want to put a little more time and effort into it, so expect that sometime down the turnpike before winter hits. Definitely before the leaves start changing, because uh, notice they are starting to change a little bit. But I want to get that done while the weather's still nice. And uh, as far as that goes, that's my two big things that I have currently uh, lined up. Uh, sometime in October, I am going to do a solo trip down to Lincoln State Park and one to Brown County State Park. So, I know those two videos will be coming up before winter. Um, when winter hits, I will probably do some... I'm not sure what I'll do this winter, but I have a list a mile long of stuff that I want to do. And... Uh, put on video for all of you and, uh, and myself because I want to get back in touch what I was doing before when we were living off grid and I believe this will you know keep my active mind at bay until we get our van or our school bus to build a schoolie we're not sure which route we're gonna go yet but I'm leaning toward a van build first because mechanically it's something I'm more familiar with and it would cost less money to get started than a bus build. Um, I'm confident with a bus build. Uh, it's just there's a lot of money involved. A lot more money involved in a bus build than there is a van build. So I don't think that's something I am ready for um, mentally or financially. But maybe some, sometime later on down the turnpike, uh, we'll do a bus build, build. But for now, I am going to do all these little videos of my daily travels and my longer travels. Hopefully, come spring, we can really get this channel to take off. Right now, I'm just getting comfortable with the speaking on the camera, speaking in front of a camera, speaking in front of people really is not something I'm used to. So really just getting used to this. So I apologize for my awkwardness and um, this chaotic rant, ranting I'm doing. Uh, yeah, I'm more of a scripted person. <laughs> You'll find that uh, down down the way some, but I, I I just think this will be really good for me, especially you know like like this driving and talking to all of you. I think it will help with my um, speech patterns and uh, my awkwardness, I guess. But anyway, um, I'm going to hop off here now. I'm going to run and get some errands done. And i got to run out to do some filming at a, another location for an upcoming video. But until then, I will see y'all later. Thanks for joining me.